Hey, how is all going? Today, we're going to go through a procedure of how to make a perfect damper. Now, I see a lot of people out there, and they struggle with their dampers. There's a couple of things that you just need to remember. One, there's no need to need damper. So, one of the most common mistakes is people punch the junk out of it, and that forces all the air out. We want to keep the flower aerated, and I'll show you very shortly a uh, quick, simple way to do that. And the other is you want a nice hot oven, okay? So when I say a nice hot hot oven, I don't mean so it's smoking and, and uh, burning everything. And one of the best ways to get your temperatures right is to preheat your oven. Now by placing a little bit of flour in the bottom of the camp oven, uh, once that flour browns up, then that's a pretty good indicator that your camp oven is a good temperature for baking. So basically, if your flour is brown, your baking will be black brown. If your flour is black, your baking will be black. Okay, so that's probably one of the biggest tips is just preheat the oven, get it the right temperature, and you're gonna get really good results. So if you'd like to just come and have a quick look at what I've got ready here in the camp oven, I'll show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so what's happened here is I've taken some nice coals from the fire here, placed some underneath and some on top of the lid, and I'm preheating the oven. Now, as I mentioned, a little bit of flour in the bottom is a pretty good indicator as to what colour your baking is going to be. So as you can see there, that's a nice brown colour, and that's likely to be the colour that my that my baking will come out of the camp oven. I'll just pop that to the side, and if you do have any concerns of it being a little bit too dark, or a bit too brown, that looks pretty good to me, but there is a couple of hot spots. So we can rotate the oven a little bit, okay, just to take that hot spots away. And if we just give it a quick sprinkle lightly just to cover up those darkish patches that's about right to go so that's ready now to drop a damper in so let's get back and go through the steps of making the damper we're going to make is our traditional Aussie damper so it's simple ingredients self-raising flour a bit of salt and some warm water okay the water doesn't have to be warm but I like to use a bit of warm water. Now, around about half a kilo of flour is going to make us a pretty nice damper. So, anywhere from a kilo, uh, half a kilo to a kilo, you're going to get um, about the same cook times and the same results. All right, around about a teaspoonful of salt, just to give it that little bit of flavour. And this is our most basic and standard recipe. Now, you might have heard your grandma say, or your mum even, when you stir your baking or stir your doughs, use a butter knife and cut through the mix. So rather than mix it with a spoon and force all the air out, we'll just make a little dam in there. Okay, so a little dam in the bottom there. And we're going to put a bit of water in. Now, one little thing I will say is just be careful as to how much moisture you add to your damper because if you put too much water in there you're going to end up with glue okay we don't want glue we want something that's much the consistency of play-doh okay so cut that in just keep cutting 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 and you'll see it's starting to take some sort of shape and go into little balls okay so we just keep that cut 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 okay that's a little bit of water now once you get to this point, we're just going to add the tiniest amounts of water at a time so that we don't wet it down too much. There's no need to need damper. One of the biggest mistakes people make, I guess they just like playing with their food, but one of the biggest mistakes that people can make is to knead the self-raising flour. And if you don't have self-raising flour, plain flour and a bit of baking powder will do exactly the same thing. All right, we mix that through. This is the most basic damper. It's the same recipe that I use to make the world's longest damper for the Guinness Book of Records. So 153 metre long damper I cooked out at, with a bit of help of course, out at Charleville on the 13th of July 2019. 
and I will share with you a little book I put together with 101 damper recipes in it, but all derived from the same simple mix. Okay, so see how that's all coming together now? It's not sticking to anything, it's not sticking to the knife, it's not sticking to the bowl, but that's pretty good now, I can handle it. It's much like Play-Doh. If I tuck the edges under, 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 I get a nice shape for the top. And I like to take a sharp knife, you probably don't want to know where this one's been, and just put a couple of scores, either across or a couple of lines through the damper, and that's going to let it open up as it cooks, and you'll get a nice uh, crust from in the middle there. So there's our damper, and it's ready to drop straight into the camp oven. So see how those cracks are going to open up there, and that'll stop it from crazing, and you'll get quite a pretty result on your damper like that. So how about we drop that in, and um, we'll give it about 20 to 30 minutes. At 20 minutes, it should be cooked. At 25 minutes it'll have a nice brown, the longer you leave it in, the browner and the harder the crust will get. Up to about 30 minutes is a pretty good time to bake your dampers. Let's give it a whirl. Right, oh, here we are. We'll lift this lid and just check that temperature again. And as you can see, a nice golden brown colour. I hope you can see that anyway. We'll just drop that bread straight in, pop the lid on and we'll give it a check in around about 20 to 25 minutes. All right, now it's been around about 20 minutes, probably a little bit better, and um, I can smell baking. So another good sign that, you, that your baking is cooked or your damper's cooked is you can smell it. So use the old beaker on the front of your face there and follow your nose. So if we go and have a bit of a look of it now, I'll invite you over, come and have a look, and we'll just see how it's going. Round about that 20 minute mark, and we should have something looking pretty good. I'll tell you what, it smells all right. We'll take that lid off there. Don't put your lid on the ground. And that looks pretty darn good to me. So that's around about the 20 minute mark, and the longer you leave it, the darker it'll get. Now a couple of tail signs. If I poke a stick, a knife, skewer in, pull it out, I end up with no dough on the blade, then that's a good sign that the damper is cooked. So no dough on the blade and you've got a pretty good result. Now we'll just lift that up. And there we've got this nice golden brown, hollow sounding bread. And shebang a bang, there's our damper. Let's break it up and have a bit of a try of it. What will tell a good damper, of course, is the taste. There's not much point in it looking good if it doesn't taste any good, does it? So we'll carve a bit off the side here. We've got a nice crust. Look at that. Lovely bread. Nice, light, fluffy. Let's have a little crack at it. Hang on. I've got something just to top it off. We'll whack a bit of fly bog on it because that's one of my favourite things. It appeases my sweet tooth. So a bit of a dollop of Golden syrup on there. Oh, and there you go. Yet another beauty. Simple recipe. Same same recipe I used to do the Guinness World Record in 2019. And um, in conjunction with that, I put together a little book, A World of Dampers. There's 101 damper recipes in here. And um, some of them are right out there on a limb but there's some beautiful breads in there give it a try you'll find that book online wiggle 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 rangernick.com.au